What is up everyone and welcome to today's video, how to get started in the gym. If you're new here, I'm Lockie, a sports science student at Oxford Brooks University and I'm here to help you with all things gym, so let's get started. Whether you're a complete beginner or just looking to get back on track, I'm going to guide you through setting goals to choosing the right gym, nutrition, staying motivated and gym etiquette. So without further ado, let's hit the first topic. So if you're a beginner and you don't know where to start or you're getting back on track because you lost motivation, the best thing you can start with is setting goals and understanding the different types of goals. Right, the first thing you do when you start on your fitness journey is set some clear achievable goals. And trust me, it's made a world of a difference when it comes to motivation. So you need to have something in mind about what you want to improve. Do you want to lose fat, build muscle, or just improve your overall health? And these will be your long-term goals. And whilst those are important, you also need to think about your short-term goals. So that could be losing five pounds in a month or being able to run a mile without stopping. So whilst your long-term goals will give you a better vision for what you want to achieve in the long run, your short-term goals are really key for keeping you motivated for achieving them little steps. So now you're probably thinking, yeah, but how do I actually make these goals so they're achievable? And you do that by following the SMART protocol. You might have already heard about this before, but the SMART protocol means your goals should be specific, measurable, achievable, relevant, and time-bound. So instead of just saying, I want to get fit, you can use the SMART protocol and say, I want to lose weight by going to the gym three times a week and eating healthier. Did you see the difference? It's a lot more actionable and keeps you accountable. But remember, it's about progress, not perfection. So celebrate your small victories along the way and it'll keep you highly motivated. And I'm gonna give you an extra nugget of information and that is delayed gratification. Delayed gratification is the ability to resist the temptation of a short-term reward in order to gain a more substantial or long-term reward later on down the line. And I promise you, I can tell you from experience, having delayed gratification or allowing delayed gratification to take place makes the reward later on down the line feel so much better. Right, now let's talk about choosing the right gym because not all gyms are created equal. So here's a few things you need to consider. The first thing is location. You want a gym that's convenient because I promise you, the further away the gym is, the less likely you are to go. I know that from experience. The next thing to consider are the facilities. Does it have the equipment you need? Are the machines well maintained? Is it clean? These are all things you need to consider. Also, closing times are super important. If you're a night owl and you go to the gym in the evening and the gym shuts at 6 p.m., you're not gonna be able to go to the gym. So get a 24 hour gym or just check that the opening times of your gym allows you to go within your normal schedule. You don't want it to be throwing your schedule around because again, you're just less likely to go to the gym. Next is cost. And this is one of the biggest factors because obviously you can go to a cheap gym, but then the facilities might not be as good. But if you can afford to invest more into your fitness journey, so by paying more for a gym, because it has better facilities and better equipment, it's probably worth the cost. Just make sure you check if there's any hidden fees or joining fees, because they can catch you out, which you don't want. In 2024, there's great gym chains and trends to look out for, for example, Pure Gym, but I would always recommend going to a privately owned gym. This way, generally the place is better maintained, better hygiene and just the staff are a lot more friendly because they are a privately owned gym. For example, my gym here is the Vista Performance Center and it's always very quiet. They have great equipment, great staff, super friendly and I could not fault this place. But remember, the best gym is one you'll actually go to. So get an idea for what the gyms are like in your area. Go try them out. Most gyms have day passes. If not, just ask to try the gym out, see the facilities, because once you're in the gym, you can get a feel for what it's actually like to work out there. Once you've done all them things, you should have found the perfect gym for you. Right, let's talk about gear. And this is my favorite topic, because if you've seen my gym bag, spoiler for the next video, you'll know how much equipment I have in my bag. But having the right gear can make your workout so much more effective and enjoyable. Admittedly, it can cost a little bit more if you invest in your own equipment, but I promise you, it makes the workout so much more effective and enjoyable. It can make things a bit more expensive having your own accessories, but I promise you it makes a world of a difference. First off, let's talk clothing. You need something comfortable. You need something breathable, sweat wicking and moisture absorbing because you don't want to be sat in a pool of your own sweat. That is the worst thing if you've had a proper heavy session and you just want to keep going. And when I say comfortable, I don't just mean soft. I mean, you are actually comfortable. You don't want something you're like fidgeting about with the whole time or like, you know, readjusting. It's just not ideal. Also, a comfortable pair of shoes is key, especially if you're doing lots of running or heavy lifting. You need something that you can run in and lift in comfortably, and also something that gives you plenty of support. You don't wanna have something that's giving you blisters or making your feet sore by the end of the workout because that's just not gonna make your workout experience enjoyable. So invest in a good pair of shoes and comfortable clothes. Right, now let's talk accessories. I am a sucker for good accessories because Gym Pin, who I'm affiliated with, are the best accessory gym brand. Code Locky for 10% off. 
but I promise this is not just a plug. They are the best equipment manufacturers ever. They ship all around the world. There will be a distributor near you. So take a look at their website or drop them an email to find out if they can ship to you. But in general, there are some really cool gym accessories that can help you get the most out of your workout. Fitness trackers are also a great tool to help you count your steps, your calories burnt, your heart rate, and all good things like that, if you're interested in them. I personally don't need a fitness tracker because it doesn't give me the information that I need, but if it suits you, then definitely invest in one. Also, getting your own resistance bands are a very good, cheap accessory to invest in. They're versatile, you can use them for lots of different exercises, and they range in resistance. So if you're getting too strong for the next one, you just move up. And not only can you use them individually, you can attach them to machines to help the resistance curve. Either you can make it easier on the top part of the movement, harder on the bottom part of the movement, or just make the resistance feel a bit different. Also, a heavy duty big water bottle is key. I have the Gymshark Stanley Cup. It's quite expensive, it's 45 quid, but you can have the straw, you can have the screw cap, you can have a flip cap, whatever you want. And it's like one and a half liters, which plenty does me for my gym session. And you know the benefits of staying hydrated during the gym. So get a big heavy duty bottle so it doesn't get broken. I've actually made a video rating the top accessories for 2024. So if you want a deep dive into what you should get, click the link at the top right corner and it'll take you straight to the video. Alternatively, wait to the end of this video and click the link in the description. So to round off that section, having the right gear is really, really beneficial and can make your workouts a lot more effective and comfortable. So don't be scared to invest the money in some decent gear. Right, so let's dive into creating a workout plan. Having a structured and effective workout plan is key for tracking your progress and keeping motivated. So the first and most important thing you need to do is decide how many days of the week you're gonna go or just how often you're gonna go. And obviously this differs person to person depending on their work schedule or just their general availability, have they got kids, stuff like that. But just pick a frequency that fits in with your schedule outside of the gym to make sure you do actually go. Because remember what I said, the best workout is one you can actually stick to. So if you're saying you're gonna to go to the gym five times a week, but you can only actually go to the gym three times a week, you're planning to go too much. So three to four days a week is a good starting frequency for someone who's not been to the gym before or someone who's just getting back into it because it allows yourself to recover whilst also allowing you to stick to a set routine. So now let's talk about what you're actually going to do during these workouts. So for beginners, a lot of people tend to do full body workouts, which is good because it helps you to build a foundation, although it can massively fatigue you if you're doing your whole body in one session. So I would recommend, if you're a beginner, doing a split-based workout. So you pick one or two, maybe even three muscles that work together, for example, chest, shoulders, and triceps, and do that on one day. In the next session, just do legs. And in the next session, just do back and biceps because they work together. So you just have to think about it strategically. Or if you don't really want to focus on one muscle group per day, you can just do upper lower splits. So one day you do upper, the next day you do lower. <coughs> so this would include doing one, maybe two exercises per muscle on your upper session, and then two or three exercises per muscle group on your lower session. Doing it that way, make sure you don't overtrain yourself and you can recover for your next session. And another reason why splits are so important, and this is why I do muscle splits, is that you can allow yourself if you program it correctly to recover properly and effectively before you do that muscle again. So for example, I do an arm day on Monday and I don't do arms again until Thursday. So I've got two days in between both arm sessions or at least a session that involves an arm muscle. So that's just a good example for you. So I put together just a little example program for the week. Pause the video now and take a screenshot if you wanna keep it. But like I said, it's just a recommendation please fine tune it to what meets your needs properly. But just make sure every workout you do includes a proper warm up and cool down, particularly for bigger muscle groups, because you're gonna be moving a lot more weight, so they'll be a lot more prone to injury. So whilst a warm up will get the blood flow into the muscles you're gonna work that session, a cool down will aid you in recovery post-training. But as always, consistency is key, so start with a program that you know you can stick to and gradually build up the intensity if you feel like you need it. If you feel like you're recovering way too early, add another session in. That is just the best way to go about it because you want to be training when you're fully recovered to make the most of your week. Now let's talk about the basics of nutrition because what you eat is gonna fuel your workouts and your recovery and is just as important as how you train in the gym. It's important to have a balanced macronutrient diet with proteins, carbs, and fats because proteins are the key thing that helps build your muscle and recover your muscle after a workout. There are so many great sources of protein like meats, like fish, steak, and chicken, 
but you can also get it from plant-based sources like beans and tofu. And carbohydrates are your body's main energy source, so make sure you keep having carbohydrates to keep you fueled throughout your workouts and fueled during your recovery. But just make sure you opt for complex, slow-releasing carbs like pasta and rice because that is gonna keep you steadily fueled throughout the day. Stay away from sugar, which are called simple carbs. That's just gonna give you a really quick energy spike, spike all your insulin, throw everything out of whack, and just, you're not gonna feel great after it. So try and stick to complex carbs if you can. But also fats are essential, but just not too much of them. So just try and go for healthy fats, like plant-based sources. So here are some simple tips and pause to screenshot the video if you need it. Staying hydrated is really important. Make sure you're drinking water before, during and after your workout. Processed foods like takeaways and microwave meals are not your friends. The less processed the food is, the better it will be for you. So try and make your meals from scratch where possible or at least the most from scratch that you can. And finally, consider meal prepping. It makes your life a lot easier to track the calories and the macronutrients and you know what you're eating and you also get to pick what you eat and it's a lot easier in the day just to take out a meal prep box and eat it. And if you're thinking about supplements, just start with a good protein powder, multivitamin, maybe a cod liver oil, and definitely creatine. That's the one thing that is a non-negotiable for me. Definitely take creatine. Just make sure you read the dosages and that you're dosing correctly. And for a more in-depth run through of protein, subscribe to this channel and keep an eye out for the protein comparisons video where I compare all the best protein options in 2024. So now let's talk about gym etiquette because everyone wants to come to the gym, feel safe, feel happy and feel comfortable with everyone around them. So here are some basic gym etiquette tips that I'd recommend. Bring a towel with you because when you sit on the benches, use the machines, you can get sweaty all over them and you wanna be able to wipe it down. If not, most gyms will have spray bottles and paper towels to wipe the machines down once you're done. But just be respectful, you don't wanna leave your sweat all over the gym because I guarantee you, you don't wanna walk up to a machine with it covered in someone else's sweat. Respect everyone else's space and time. If someone's using the machine that you want, don't hover around, maybe politely ask them how many sets you've got but I promise that person doesn't want to feel like they're being rushed. So politely ask them how many sets they've got and just maybe use another machine for the meantime. Do not hog the machines. Nothing gets on my wick more than people in big groups or even on their own sat on a machine for the whole session that I'm there because I want to use it. If you're doing multiple sets or high volume exercises, let people join in with you if you can see that they're waiting for the machine. There's no harm in it. They can work in whilst you're resting and you can work in whilst they're resting. And also don't be so loud that everyone in the gym can hear you. It's all right to make some noise. Grunting is just annoying. Don't drop the weights everywhere. Just be respectful for everyone's space. Because at the end of the day, I know it's a gym, not a library, but you don't want to be sat there screaming throughout the whole session and distracting everyone else from their workout. But let's finish on a positive note for this section. Everyone starts somewhere. So don't feel intimidated or self-conscious by other people in the gym. But also don't make someone feel intimidated or self-conscious in the gym because especially if that's their first time in the gym, they're just never going to want to come back. So you want to make this a nice community space. And for the final step, staying motivated is really difficult, but it's super important for your long-term success. So here's a few tips to help you stay motivated. Track your progress, whether that's through a journal, an app, or taking photos. Tracking your progress helps you see how far you come and does keep you motivated, especially in the long run. Because if you take photos of yourself, I guarantee you in a year's time, you'll look back and think, oh my God, how different do I look? And it's the best feeling ever. Set milestones and celebrate them. Text your gym buddy, treat yourself to a spa day, new gym gear, whatever it is, Big or small, milestones are worth celebrating because they are what keeps you motivated in the long run. Find a workout buddy. Going to the gym with someone keeps you accountable, makes you push harder and really keeps you motivated. Also, it's good fun to share your progress with someone because you're on the same journey as them. You can share ideas, share information and just overall help each other. And mix up your workout. Trying new things can keep things interesting. For me, I've just changed my leg days to be more functional because I enjoy them a lot more. And as I always say, the best workout routine is one you'll actually stick to. So switching things up, trying new classes or new ways of training can just keep things interesting and keep you motivated. And lastly, be kind to yourself because progress takes time and a lot of effort. You should be proud of yourself for putting this much effort in and getting the rewards from it. It's normal to have ups and downs. Celebrate the success. Don't dwell on the losses, but just stay focused on the long-term goal. So let's recap. We've covered a lot today from choosing the right gym, gym etiquette, gym gear, nutrition, staying motivated, amongst lots of other things. Starting your fitness journey can be overwhelming, but with these tips, you're on your way to success. But remember, it's about progress, not perfection. So things bad will happen. It's just how you bounce back from them. If you found this video helpful, click the thumbs up, subscribe to my channel and hit the notification bell so you don't miss any future videos. And if you guys have any questions or ideas for future videos, drop it in the comments. I love hearing from you guys. Thanks for watching and I'll catch you in the next one. Peace.